Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and today I will do my review of Starcade 1987. Starting off the evening we go to our first match of the night. It is Eddie Gilbert, Rick Steiner and Larry Sabisco versus Jimmy Garvin, Sting and Michael P.S. Hayes. Uh, the match itself, good matchup, back and forth matchup between both teams with Hayes, Sting and Garvin keeping the pace of the match. But the match ultimately ends in a time limit draw. A couple of things I'll say about this match is, number one, it was a good opening matchup for Starcade 1987, but the one downside I would say about this match is that the match ended up ending in a time of the draw, and we didn't get a secure winner in this matchup. So, again, it was a great matchup. I just wish we get a clear-cut winner in that matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Barry Windham versus Steve Williams for the UWF Heavyweight Championship. I thought it was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between both Barry Windham and Steve Williams, with Windham keeping the pace of the match. But Steve Williams ends up hitting a roll up on Windham, pinning him for the three, and your winner of the match is Steve Williams. <coughs> Hats off to Steve Williams for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is the Rock and Roll Express versus Midnight Express in a Skywalkers match. I thought it was a great matchup, back and forth matchup between both teams with the Rock and Roll Express ultimately getting the win in this matchup. Hats off to the Rock and Roll Express for getting the win in this match. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Terry Taylor versus Nikita Kowal for the NWA and UWF Television Championships. Number one, I thought it was an okay matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Terry Taylor and Nikita Koloff with Terry Taylor keeping the pace of the match. But Nikita ultimately hits a devastating clothesline on Terry Taylor, pinning him for the three, and the winner of the match is Terry Taylor. Hats off to Terry Taylor for, keeping, uh, for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go to our next match of the night. It is Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard versus the Road Warriors for the NWA Tag Team Championships. I thought this was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between both teams with Arn and Tully keeping the pace of the match. But Arn and Tully ultimately get the win in this match by disqualification. A couple of things I'll say about this matchup is number one, the teams that were involved in this matchup. Both teams that were involved in this matchup are some of the best tag teams in all of professional wrestling. I mean, you had the Road Warriors with Hawk and Animal that have had a historic pro wrestling uh, career, man. I mean, you know, the first ever Skywalkers match, phenomenal matchup. Um, you know, even going back and watching some of the old uh, Road Warriors documentaries, man, the career that they've had uh, and the matches they've had, I mean, they've had a incredible career, hands down. I mean, Hawk and Animal will forever be synonymous with professional wrestling, just from the theme music alone, the ring gear, you know, you got the, the football pads with the spikes, the face paint, um, the Mohawks. I mean, everybody that loved professional wrestling, everybody knew who the Road Warriors were all about. And they were a phenomenal tag team. You can say the same thing about Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. Number one, being a part of, if not the greatest stable in professional wrestling of all time, being the Four Horsemen with, you know, Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Ole, you know, Tully Blanchard. Phenomenal stable, number one. And then just the team of Arn and Tully. I mean, they were a perfect tag team from them just being Arn and Tully to them being the Brain Busters. I mean, those guys gelled in the ring perfectly together. They were a phenomenal tag team. And, I mean, they are right there with the Road Warriors, hands down. Two of the most, uh, two of the best teams in all of professional wrestling, as far as tag teams, in my honest opinion. The only bad thing I'll say about this matchup is I wish we would have got a clean finish, you know, and a clear-cut winner in this matchup, because this match was absolutely amazing. But hats off to Arn and Tully for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Dusty Rhodes versus Lex Luger for the NWA United States Championship in a steel cage match. Uh, number one, I thought the match was a great matchup, back and forth matchup between both Dusty and Lex Luger with Dusty keeping the pace of the match. But Dusty ends up hitting a devastating DDT on Lex Luger, pinning him for the three, and your winner of the match is the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Pass off to Dusty Rhodes for getting a win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Ric Flair versus Ronnie Garvin for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship in a steel cage matchup. 
Uh, number one, great matchup. Uh, back and forth between both Ric Flair and Ronnie Garvin, with Garvin keep, uh, keeping the pace of the match. But Flair ultimately gets the win. He retains the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Hats off to Ric Flair for getting the win in this matchup. A couple things I'll take away from Starcade 1987. Number one, it was not a bad Starcade at all. At all. The Dusty Rhodes match and Lex Luger match was phenomenal. I mean, you have Lex Luger at the time being the rookie, you know, just kind of getting, you know, into professional wrestling, in my honest opinion, you know, and you can kind of tell that, you know, Dusty being the veteran, you know, I don't think Dusty really wanted to put Lex Luger over at that time, but, you know, Lex Luger, they were building him up to be the next big thing for NWA, and he, you know, later on in the years, he became that, you know, he beat Ric Flair for the World Heavyweight Championship, and, you know, Lex Luger was the guy for NWA, you know, in the later years, he was, he was the man. <laughs> Ric Flair, Ronnie Garvin, again, you know, phenomenal main event. Ric Flair, if not one of the greatest, if not the greatest wrestler of all time, 16-time World Heavyweight Champion. Um, Ronnie Garvin, again, phenomenal athlete, fantastic wrestler. And then you had the tag team matchup with Arn and Tully versus the Road Warriors. I mean, what more can you ask for? Two of the best tag teams in professional wrestling of all time. Hands down. Hands down. And there's a lot of tag teams nowadays that try to emulate what Arn and Tully do. Look at FTR. You know what I mean? Obviously, yeah, they're working with Tully Blanchard, but if you look at, you know, Cash Wheeler and Dax Hardwood from AEW, it has a lot of similarities of how Arn and Tully used to wrestle. Hands down. So, yes, Arn and Tully, Road Warriors, two of the greatest tag teams of all time. Dusty Rhodes versus Lex Luger, and then you obviously have the main event. Rick Flair defending his NWA World Heavyweight Championship against Ronnie Garvin. As far as Starcade 87, I always give these pay-per-views a rating. I'm going to give Starcade 87, honestly, a 7, 7 and a half. I don't think it was that bad of a Starcade, in my honest opinion. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say it was the best Starcade, and definitely was not the worst. A lot of good matches on here. And honestly, there really wasn't a match I could have done without. I just wish they would have booked better matches rather than those top three matches. I thought the card should have been, you know, Starcade to me as a fan is like, you know, WrestleMania of WCW slash NWA. You know, the best versus the best. And, you know, we kind of had that, but some of the matches kind of, you know, it, a lot of the matches didn't really end, you know, with a clear cut winner. You know, you had a disqualification and you had a time limit draw. I just wish you got a clean finish in some of these matchups, especially even the you know the first match of the night in that six-man tag match. It would have been a phenomenal ending to see who got the clear cut, you know, who was the clear-cut winner in that matchup. But unfortunately, we didn't get that, and the match ended in any time limit draw. So I'm gonna have to get Starcade 1987, a solid seven, maybe seven and a half at best. But this is my review of Starcade 1987. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful and remember, stay classy.